Welcome to Launch Code, a premier business podcast, starring Evan Haver, Matt Best, and Jared Taylor. Hey, hey, welcome back to Launch Code, the premier business podcast. Today we are in our San Antonio studio, finally settled down, and we can start running guests through and having call-ins and everything like that. But we're kicking this one off with a local friend of ours that's been here for a few years, uh, Mr. Michael Mahilski. Close, close. Give me, give me that one. Uh, Mahalski. Mahalski. Yeah. Mike Mahalski, and now we've known you for almost four years now. Yeah, from just about the beginning then. And uh, and that is when you started Sons of Liberty Gunworks. That's right. Which is located in South San Antonio, Texas. Um, so, Mike, let's talk real quick about your history in the military upon... Uh, I'm sorry, not the military, but no, uh, civilian history, scum, <laughs> history in uh, firearms, like like because I know you started as just a super into building and mechanics of it, you know, right. got into dug deep in the books, deep into the science. And, you know, where did that where did that take you to the point of saying, you know, I can I can open a gun shop and I can create my own guns? Yeah, I think everybody in the in the firearms industry were end users you know first right people have a passion for shooting that's that's kind of my story i've i've always loved firearms i mean ever since i was a a kid and i've owned just about every kind of weapon you can imagine and on every one of those i there was always something i would have tweaked or done a little bit different and i also looked at the gun industry as a kind of the direction that it was going and i thought you know I thought we could actually improve some stuff. I, I didn't want to come on the scene to be new just for the sake of being new. I actually wanted to improve the platform and contribute to that. And that's kind of how we got started. Now, so before before you guys, you know, before you even choose a name and come up with a shop, like were you gunsmithing for your buddies? And like, <laughs> like, like, is that is that kind of how this went down? Yeah, so I, I took an armorer's uh, school and... And I, I took the little bit of information I got from there, and then it really kind of snowballed the more and more research. And I started looking at this rifle almost in a clinical way, you know. And so I started building rifles on my kitchen table. Uh, the first 20 rifles I built were for a couple of team guys, a couple of Marines, you know. And it started to it started to really pick up momentum. Guys were pretty happy with the work I was doing until uh, I got a call from the ATF. And they, they told me pretty much to either get a license or shut down. I got like stop a stop building guns. Stop building guns in your. I well, I shipped fifty rifles to the state of Alaska in one month, and so they're just like, why? <laughs> why is this guy doing this? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's that's a lot of rifles to one state in one month, even yeah. for you know a company, much less a guy, you know, tinkering on his coffee table. Yeah. Yeah. And uh so from there like like you like you said you and I talking before the show you're like I knew a lot about guns I didn't know anything about business. So oh, God, yeah. from that <laughs> point, you know, after getting that notification from the ATF like were you just like pick up the business for dummies book and like let's let's see where this goes or where do you go from there? Well, the the coffee table that I was building guns on <laughs> I lost the coffee table. I, I was uh living with this girl and she ended up kicking me out and some Elmer Fudd looking motherfucker moved in. Anyway, so I was in a pretty low spot, man. Um, and I'd gone out to visit my brother out in California. He's a team guy. And uh, he's he's looking at me like this pathetic mess. He's like, dude, you need to go and start a gun company. Like, you need to go do this. And so he actually helped me come up with the name Sons Liberty. Obviously the theme, you know, patriotism, 2 way, all that kind of good stuff. And I uh, came back home. It was kind of a serendipitous. I met my business partner through a mutual friend. He wanted to, I didn't, I didn't know him at all at the time. We kind of met randomly through a friend and he had a lot of workspace. He had about 20,000 square feet of unused space that he was willing to put up for free, um, you know, to, to help get this thing started. So that was a super lucky. Oh my God. Things. Yes. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a, <laughs> just to have being able to, to, to walk into a location you know, not worrying about, you know, a five year lease or yeah. you know, am I gonna am I gonna generate enough revenue to pay for this thing? So I mean that's that's amazing. And so did he come in monetarily as well? Um honestly he 
his vision for this thing, I think, was more of a hobby. You know, he wanted to kind of get into the gun business as more of a kind of a hobby way to enhance our own collections and stuff like that. Yeah. I wanted to be the best rifle company in the country. And, I mean, I, I don't think he <laughs> – I don't think he took me very seriously at first. So he did put a little bit of money in. I actually sold my vehicle. And after I paid so these, off. Some- these are the part. These, these, these are stories everybody's got to hear. Yeah. Like, because this is this is what real business comes down to in the beginning. Like- I sold my truck, dude. And I after I paid off some debts, I had about $7,000 to my name. And I sunk it all into, you know. Parts. Parts, you know. And that's, that's how we started. And we started with $7,000 three and a half years ago and you know we're we're doing multi-million dollar years that's you know? that's amazing yeah uh and how many employees do you have uh we have 11 full-time guys right now uh all of them are most of them are all veterans all of them yeah, yeah pretty much all of them are veterans with the exception of the first guy we that hired awesome. but uh He's like the rain man of guns. He's a savant. Man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> very nice guy. You've even nice got guy. like international veterans working there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Scotty, yeah. Yeah. A guy uses the word like, cunt as a comma, man. He's great. <laughs> so you sell your truck. You buy parts. Uh, you know, where, where are you at when it comes to, okay, how am I going to turn these into finished rifles? And how am I going to find customers to buy these? So here's a great story about when we started so that there's a certain bolt that we use in our gun for our bolt carrier groups and there was only one bolt that i was going to use if i could not get that bolt i would have not started the gun company okay because that's how critical it was to me <laughs> so i called the the machine company that, that oems these i called the vice president of that company every day for about 30 days straight until he finally picked up the phone to talk to me now their minimum order was 500 pieces and I, there's no way in hell I could afford that, all right? But I called him and harassed him so much, he finally asked me, like, how the fuck do I make you go away? Like, will you promise never to call me again, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, yeah, so how many do you want? I'm like, I need 10. <laughs> I need 10 bolts, man. And that is, how we, that is how we started. But it was that kind of almost obsessive, almost just compulsive uh, persistence if I did not get this one thing, then I, you know, it, it, I felt like it would have derailed my entire plan to build the best rifles in the in the country, and that's what he had to do. I mean, <laughs> pretty shameless. So he gave you, so he, so he, he, he let you me. do a PO of ten bolts. Yeah, you build the guns out. Now, who get who whose hands do they go into first? Uh, it's like I said, some of the you know, again with Sons of Liberty, we had a couple team guys, a couple of uh, you know, shooting instructors, like some pretty big name people that helped us like have almost instant legitimacy. When you have those kinds of guys supporting the brand, yeah, it's like Tiger Woods, you know, suggesting a putter. You listen, you know. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, and uh, so after that, like, you sell the first round of rifles. It's still you, right? Employee one. It, yeah, I mean, twenty hour days. I mean, because a You're lot doing of yeah, all the paperwork with the ATF. You know, Paper- I mean, that's taxing. Yeah. Oh God, it's I'm so disorganized too. I mean, this is the stuff that I'm so grateful now that we have compliance people you know in place to keep me out of prison yeah, I mean, that's you know because i mean we obviously been to the shop we have a full bar there yeah. you know i mean we you know we we like to have drinks atf like, yeah exactly yeah yeah exactly uh and so but we i mean but doing the paperwork and building the guns and then trying to also market we didn't have a marking budget it, we, we actually have never spent money on advertising until like the last maybe four or five months but getting out there and being really active in these like Facebook groups and trying to build, you know, following on social media and stuff. I mean, that was that's a full time job, yeah. you know, uh, especially if you don't have any money to advertise. So building guns, advertising, phone calls, you know, just bit beating on doors. That was me up until right about the first eight months. Yeah. Now, now, when what was the second PO that you made to your OEM bull guys? Oh, uh, I think we had gotten at that point like up to like fifty. You know, like <laughs> so um, so he gave you he gave you yeah. carte blanche to do a modified order as long as you left him alone. As long as I left him alone. And he, I, I had to only contact him through email. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was, I'm lucky he didn't put a restraining order on me. I mean, you know, I talked to him. Do just, you still use these bolts today? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's a. Are you up to their thing. minimum now? Oh, we crush it. <laughs> we crush it. it. Has he come back, though, and said, you know what? All right. I'll, I'll I, give I t- it to you. I talked. We get Christmas cards now. He sends us uh, the the Christmas card, you know. And I talked about it a week ago, and we were kind of laughing about that. I'm like, "Hey, dude, thanks for 
thanks for taking that shot on us because now, you know, we we crush it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Um, so going into your second year, you know, now you have things established. You have your workspace. When do you hire your first employee and why? What what was the reason behind it? <laughs> so Dylan was our first employee, and uh, this is this is the rain man. And uh, he just kind of showed up one day, and he just wouldn't leave. You know, and <laughs> there's he, always those guys in a gun shop. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, he, he just <laughs> would show up one day, and he wouldn't leave. And hey, like, you want me to sweep? Like, <laughs> sure, if you're gonna be here. <laughs> That's exactly. Well, remember, I didn't have a car. Yeah, you know, I had sold my. So this, so my first employee, actually, his job was to pick me up and take me home from work. That's and, awesome. You know? <laughs> uh, but super meticulous in his work, and you know, a weird fucking guy, dude. But he's just. He truly believes in the cause, man, and and so he was our first employee, and that took a lot of pressure off. So as here's the thing, see for us, I can teach somebody how to build a weapon to the Sons of Liberty standard, right? Yeah, but I can't teach someone how to be a cool guy. Yeah, so we hire basically. I don't want any experience per se with that stuff. What I want is like the right personality, humor, you know, attitude, mindset. Because you're gonna be standing in, next to him in a bay all day. Exactly, man. I mean, you, know, you have to have, you know, it's kind of a twisted sense of humor and a little yeah. thick skin. And I mean, and you can't teach that to somebody, right? That's why veterans do so well with us because they, they're coming to the table kind of already. You're giving me an yeah. idea. I think me and Dave need to go down there and, and we do a video where you make me build a gun. Dude, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I'd, I'd be honored, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're putting that on the board, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be Build honored, a gun man. at Sons of Liberty. Because we're going to a lot more video content with this stuff now. We've got to make it interesting. And I want to learn. I want to learn and see the process of what, what is the Sons of Liberty standard. You know, walk us through it right now. So, I mean, obviously, you know, the first part would be like materials, right? Mm -hmm. there, there, there is a difference. There's a quantifiable difference in you know, cosmetically, a lot of these things all look the same. But when you really start to get under the hood and you really start seeing what's going on, uh, those materials are going to make a difference. Uh, bolt steel, extractor type, spring type, you know, uh, buffer weights, gas port sizes, dimpling, all, all those all those tiny minutia, they don't look cool on Instagram. That's not something you can't take a picture of your gas port size and post it, right? So nobody <laughs> gives a shit and they overlook stuff like that. But when you need to count on that weapon through some sort of sustained string of fire, that gas port is what's going to either push that rifle a little bit further or the thing just kind of folds up, folds up, stops functioning. Same thing with buffer weights, you know. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that is not sexy, but our rifles work. I mean, there's, I mean, they just work. They're sledgehammers. You know, that's why we've grown so that's amazing so dylan your first employee did he come from a weapons building background or was he just was he someone as you started to teach kind of got the concept and started to innovate he had an interest in weapons but not uh, but he had no real weapon experience i mean so yeah when we brought him on i was really impressed with how quickly he learned and then how he actually improved i mean he his work was cleaner than mine, like staking the castle nut. Like, I, it looks like a caveman went in there and beat some <laughs> shit, right, when I do it. But with him, it was very clean. I could tell, like, okay, that's that's good for the brand. You know, yeah. like, yeah. You fucking detail is on point. Exactly, yeah. So rolling into year two, uh, at what point is it like, okay, this is no longer just me and Dylan's show? So obviously, you know, Kyle, my business partner, he's a uh, – he's – very very organized and he has an experience with like retail and stuff so without him none of this would have happened but this thing turned into a business probably around this going into the second year whenever it wasn't just your friends anymore buying your product you know you now it's people were, are saying hey i've heard such good things i need one of these it was all word of mouth and what's neat is that you're getting orders from cities you've never been to and states you've never been to you know you know, I've heard the same thing. When Dan, when Daniel from Ground Style came on the show, he was like, he was like, I celebrated the first time an order came in from somebody that wasn't my family That's or wasn't exactly a friend right. that I was begging to buy something. That it was a random person that was just interested in the product. I I still have the order printed on my desk. The very first rifle we sold online. That wasn't someone walking into the store. Wasn't someone that you met at a shooting event or something. somebody randomly logged onto our site gave us their money you know and believed in us dude <laughs> yeah, you know i mean no, that's i super and, cool and that was like a milestone that's whenever i really knew okay this thing's this thing's actually happening you know 
And then after that, man, it's kind of like those milestones take forever to achieve. But once you hit it, it kind of it accelerates. It hap- things start happening very quickly, you know. And 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 even to this day, like I know, you know, you as the president and CEO of the company, you're still actively making appearances at all types of shooting events and trade shows and everything like it, you know like you like we were talking about like with your brand you're approachable that's exactly yeah we want i hope we always maintain that accessibility i mean i publish my personal cell phone number on facebook groups and i mean it's all on our website yeah i still really like talking to shooters i still like helping people you know find solutions to whatever they're trying to solve um and it's important to get like that that FaceTime and to actually meet people. Like when we go to Shot Show, a lot of people want to go hang out with like the industry giants, right? You know, yeah, I still see like even some of my employees and stuff that have like that that starstruck. They want to go hang out with Marty Daniel or they want to go hang out. For me, Marty Daniel's never gonna buy a rifle from me, man. You yeah. know, and I'm not I'm not gonna buy one of his either. I wanna hang out with shooters. I wanna hang out with guys that are that are shooting. That's that's our people, man. You, know? you want to hear what their problems are. Yeah, and, and hear what they like, how, you know, get, just get feedback and, and take that stuff seriously. I mean, you know, never be above scrutiny and take good advice. Uh, what kind of uh, challenges have you faced uh, in the customer service world? Because I imagine, uh, dude, I know oh. I've, I've, I have plenty of friends in the firearms business, whether it's parts and stuff like that. I know how brutal some of these shooters can be because... There is there is a, a group of them that that assume they know more than everybody, yeah. and it's like you know they're That's trying to jam something that doesn't fit, and they send you a picture, and they're like, "You fuck this up," and you're like, "Dude, it's backwards." So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, okay. So look, let's hear some of these stories. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you. <laughs> well, I don't know if a lot of people know you can't void a Sons of Liberty warranty. Okay, I've replaced guns for people whose homes were burned. You know, guns that were destroyed in house fires. People that have put. 300 blackout ammo and a 556 five, gun and, and we replace it we our end users support but there's nothing like us right so because of that we see some interesting shit uh, <laughs> one, one of the uh, see like one of you know every like every bolt carrier group that we sell is full auto test fired after assembly we test fire everything and i'll get guys that have called me and you know complain like hey this thing's been used i'm like yeah it's yeah, I needed fire. to make sure that you <laughs> yeah. that you got a gun that worked, bro. And, and every once in a while we get the and dude, I have no problem telling them, hey man, we're probably not the company for you. You know, I'll send you a return label, you know, keep the hat. And you know, <laughs> and, and you know, we're probably but I mean if that's what your complaint is, like Yeah, you know, and then and then other you know, a lot of people are used to you know, I want to be able to shoot, you know, a one inch group at a thousand yards, uh, you know, and I want it to do this and this and this and this, like, and I've got 500 bucks. <laughs> I'm like, what? It was like, you know, you just like, you want Ferrari performance and you got like, you know, you go budget, man. I mean, yeah. it doesn't work. That's a little bit of a hurdle trying to explain to people why. Are you building bulk guns? We, ha- we actually, uh, once a year, we'll release about 10. I think this year we're going to release 20. Dude, I kind of want a bulk gun. Dude, I, that's my passion, man. <laughs> ever since, uh, ever since Chase Stroud and Applied Ballistics, they got me out to hit at two miles on oh. my second round. Dude, that will what caliber? Uh, it's called three seventy five lethal. Wow. Oh, dude, it's an eight and a half second time of flight. Jeez. That will that's contagious. But I get in your blood, man. And <laughs> yeah, bolt guns are. That's kind of my. But I do when I'm not at work. I might, you know? I might be hitting you up as soon as I get a Texas driver's license. Uh, I, I, need, I need a bolt gun in my life. Yeah, we'll get you hooked up, man. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I've I've heard the horror stories of customer service in the firearms industry. It's just a nightmare. But you guys sound like you have you know quite a program going over there. You have a freaking lifetime warranty on your forever. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, and, and that's but but having that kind of having that kind of thing in place, it gives you a lot of confidence whenever you're dealing with somebody. Because I know how insane our QC is. I know that it's assembled, test fired, inspected, test fired. You know, there's there's three sets of eyes on that weapon before it ships. So whenever it gets to, I've had people call me and they're assholes and they call me like, hey man, this gun didn't come with the bolt carrier group. I'm like, if you understood what went into every gun before it leaves, you'd understand how impossible that is, and it kind of gives because, like, you know, you're never supposed to call a customer a liar up until you know they're fucking lying. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you, you know, just, you know, I mean, sometimes it's simpler and it's easier just to 
let them roll with it, but I'll let them know. I I know that you know that I know you're full of shit. You know? <laughs> but I imagine though that this l- loyalty program you have going on, it it's turning your customers into multi customers. Oh How yeah. How many man. of your customers are say are so happy with your first product? They're like, I want more of them. Dude, absolutely, man. And like police departments, if a Sons Liberty rifle is used in an officer involved shooting, we replace the gun while it goes to evidence. That's amazing. Because I was teaching armorers courses and I was talking to sh- like sh- cops all over the country and I'd see the pieces of shit that they were carrying. I'm like, why would you stake your life on this? And they're like, well, if I have to use it, I'm going to lose it. And after hearing that about 10 times, I decided, hey, man, go ahead and buy a Sons Liberty rifle. And if you have to use it, I'll replace it. Optic, suppressor, light, whatever, whatever configuration you purchased it in, that's how I'm going to send it back to you, man. Unfortunately, it's happened a few times. I've had no. to replace a few guns, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, are you guys manufacturing suppressors, or are you partnered with a, a suppressor? I'm, yeah, I'm, we're partnered pretty tight with Dead Air, man. That's okay. a, that can matches our rifle really well. It's just overbuilt. It's tough, man. Who's Dead Air? Now, I've, I've heard of them. I'm pretty sure I might be friends with them. Who is it? Uh, Mike Pappas, Gary Oh, Mike Hughes. Pappas. There we go. Yeah, I know Mike Pappas. <laughs> he's, he's brilliant, He's freaking man. hilarious. Dude, he's a, he's a nut. Dude, I love that guy. there is an old video on YouTube uh, that I filmed. I wasn't in the video, but we were interviewing Mike, Mike Pappas in like 2012, and it was, dude, he's so funny. Is it dry? <laughs> like, it's, well, uh, there's a helicopter out back. I mean, I think it's under the shed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <He has laughs> like, the, you're like, what are you talking about? He goes, oh, I just thought somebody asked for a helicopter ride. <laughs> that's, dude, that's a, wow, that's actually pretty spot on, man. He, uh, you know, he has a, he, he drives his tank around. You know, he has a tank and like he cruises around. I'm like, that's that's. So then he'll look at you and smile. Are you gonna wear a jacket? And you're like, Mike, what the fuck are you talking about right now? He goes, exactly. <laughs> oh, he's he's the best, man. And he's he's brilliant. He's fun. And like, and he is like the. He is the quintessential gun industry person, well, man. Dude, you know? He was he was part of Silencer Co. and yeah. SWR. That's what it was called, right? SWR. Or what was when they merged? They bought Silencer Co. Bought. Uh, that's right. I, f- I forget yeah. the name, but yeah, you, but, that's exactly you know, right. it's kind of sad. He got pushed out of that whole thing, and, and then he came back and kicked kicked yeah. him in the nuts by building a better suppressor, better mount. Well, he was he's a fucking Rain Man genius. Yeah, he's a yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you met him on the street, creepier than shit. You don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> hey, do you have an extra bag? <laughs> What the Dude, fuck is going on right now? <laughs> oh, that's so perfect. Man. I'm going to have to definitely tag him in this dude. Cause... <laughs> so awesome, man. I think, uh, you know, anybody that's out there, whether, you know, you're you're looking to start a business in the firearms world, you know, hope they learn something from your path. I love hearing stories like I had to sell my truck and I took all my money. Like this is this is the america the cutthroat of fucking business and this is what it takes and the fact that your first employee's job was to give you a ride to work and take you home i mean that's amazing so if you're looking for a rifle that comes with a lifetime guarantee (laughs) where can they find it uh sons liberty gunworks.com we're on uh facebook instagram uh that's kind of how we communicate to the to most of our peoples and through the- again if you have if you're out there and you have questions about buying uh a rifle or anything i mean obviously you know hit mike up this is a this is a downright expert that'll that'll get back to you yeah um, I mean, my phone number is up everywhere man I, I legitimately love talking about guns talking to shooters man that's awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Mike. Um, you know, we look forward to doing the video special where I go and build a gun for a day. Oh, I'd love it, man. It'd be uh, awesome. I think that'll be a good time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Launch Code. 